welcome to the channel if you're new to it or you haven't already thumbs up and subscribe it's all about the uh, blues harmonica and today uh, I'm going to give you my take on uh, vibrato um, now you may be wanting to do it through curiosity or you may be at a stage where you think you want to uh, advance and put some of this stuff in or you've heard it in different ways and like the idea of it or perhaps you're not too keen on the idea but uh, kind of want to learn it anyway all right there's lots out there on this um, it's not tricky to do there's a, a few types that I do um, but my take on it is that you should really um, think about it in musical terms when you're going to come across this now although I'm a blues harmonica player and I coach blues harmonica I had many, I had many, many years teaching uh, and coaching uh, saxophone, jazz players, straight players, commercial players, all different types of player. Um, and vibrato, I'm going to kind of slightly relate it to that in, in what takes place. Because if you're in year one or year two, or well, we really shouldn't talk about time, should we? Because outside time for music, really, if we're in outer space, uh, well, you know, you could argue that time doesn't really exist in that uh, particular dimension. However, I digress. So, we have uh, these uh, ways to do it. Um, you have a note, and of course, or uh, lots of different ways. All right, as opposed to, well, First off, my tip would be, if you're at a stage where you're starting to get um, accuracy on uh, on 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, you're starting to get some bends and you're starting to get a little bit of accuracy on that, <coughs> excuse me, it's a good time to, uh, to give it a go. If you're not quite there with the accuracy yet, you can start moulding these things, but you must be careful because once you incorporate and develop to get vibrato, um, you might not be able to undo it easily. Now in the saxophone world, that's often the case. Now I'll explain what I mean by that. I've been a bop player and a modern jazz player and we like, and I like it on this, I like a matte sound. So I'm not keen on really many forms of vibrato. I use all of them, um, but I use them in very subtle ways as I hear it. I like to hear horns hitting it in unison. If they're on their own, maybe playing a harmony underneath, but not playing a harmony at speed. I like it in unison. I like the harmonica to be played in a matte way. Um, and also, uh, when you're playing in a more uh, controlled fashion that you might want to play clean and put it on the end which is a lot of sax players do play clean then put it on the end so once you get to your Stan Getz here and all those sort of guys that's what you're doing because if you don't do that and you put it on all the time then although they want to sound more modern they'll probably end up sounding like a 1930s Agatha Christie movie okay so it's horses for courses and these old big greats like Ben Webster, who he sort of lipped into it and put it on, which um, some people like, I'm not keen on that even. And then Coleman Hawkins, great player of course, but you know, not for me, forget it. It ain't there, but you know, so I'm into that map thing of the, and the things, you Clifford Brown, Dizzy Gillespie, Fats Navarro, and of course the great Miles Davis who took from those three. I'm into that map sound. And if in doubt, leave it out. Yeah, I'll put it on there. Okay, so you've got throat vibrato. You get lots of people coaching on it <laughs> from the throat. I'm drawing now, <laughs> blowing. <laughs> and you've got from the mouth, another way, jaw, up and down. Okay, and there's several others, a, a couple of others that I do that I coach separately. I use them all uh, spasmodically, but there's a case in point, there's one particularly uh, uh, well-known well 
harmonica player who's now uh, passed on. But um, a lot of guys really like his playing. Uh, I'm not keen on it at all because um, this particular guy, he uh, sustains here. He likes to do that on the three draw half step, which uh, on um, flat and third, um, I don't like uh, any form of vibrato on a flat and third. Or if you are using it, it's got to be in a sparse context. It's just personal preference. Other people like it differently, but it ain't hip to me. I don't like that. Um, it it creates a, it created a kind of a signature thing for him. It was quite, um, but I don't like that way of playing. Okay, but um, then if you look at Hammond organs, the way that Hammond organ plays, um, how how the sustain comes in on and how that works, and you can imagine and you start imagining these things in your in your head of what you can use and what you can't use. But um, if you, I mean, if that's okay, if you want to, I, I came across a saxophone player that then wanted to be like a soul player. And again, they go down the soul route and they start trying to lip up and, and develop a vibrato and they end up basically, again, sounding like 1930s Agatha Christie. That's okay if you're in the studio having to be asked to do that. But uh, it's, it's not quite, it's not what they're doing, the way they're lipping up. And then they find it really difficult to get out of that um, way of doing it. And you, this can happen here. So, but if, you, if you've nailed down and got a little bit of accuracy first, then it's, it's, it's a lot easier to undo. Um, and the more that you listen, of course, you will listen to how the great players work it out and then you can work from there. Um, you see, it's like, um, for example, the reason why human beings are attracted to it in one sense is because if you look on an oscilloscope where you've got the wavelength, um, we're attracted by the, um, the fact that um, it's not constant. It's not within that purity of sound. There's, there's movement in it. Uh, as jazz saxophone players, what we do when we were hired in blues bands, of course, you play differently. Not only do you phrase slightly differently and strip a lot of uh, intricate uh, movement away, but you also use a growling technique where you create an arpeggio. So you're playing three notes in one. So you're actually playing three notes all the time. So you can be employed as a horn section as one person. I almost had a uh, argumentative discussion with somebody years ago that said, oh, we, we, on harmonicas, you can play chords. You know, you can't do that on a saxophone. Wrong. Yes, you can and it's been done forever. Um, somebody that thinks they've got a lot of experience but really haven't got much at all. They're probably very good at what they were doing on the instrument but of course you need to listen to everything and then try and piece together what is actually going on. The human being it likes this oscillation of wave. You know you pick up your steel guitar, stick on your slide, you run up these open tunings and you get all these multifunctions it's always that movement that is the attraction. Now, when you're playing faster, of course, as well, to, to lay off that um, sort of uh, vibrato thing, and it, it, it creates a definite statement, a, a definite impact. Um, now, that's not for everybody. Some of you will really enjoy um, putting vibrato on everything, and that's entirely up to you. If, remember, everything here is subjective, okay? so. What I'm saying isn't necessarily the way that you should do it. But if you, if you, if you go to it, um, you'll find up at the top of the harmonica, these blow bends, you'll find that um, you'll tend to use a slightly different technique um, of the ones that I've talked about to get the maximum out of it. And the, like all these things, you know, we shouldn't be uh, handing things on a plate. Go away with the very basics and just play around with them and then you will develop an inch by inch you will you'll move along a line and you'll develop okay so actually using a little bit of throat on the draw and then using the mouth on the out okay now when you're doing a tongue box okay then you can use different ones there Okay, throat so you go <coughs> oh, <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, they work, um, the jaw moving up and down works 
on certain avenues of the heart better than others. Same with all these techniques. Uh, when you start working them on bends, make sure you've got reasonable on those bends because you don't want to be able to then learn to employ it on those bends for accuracy and then you get the wave and then you sigh, your accuracy starts to go a little bit and also on top of that, um, you can't undo it. So, you know, so you can put it in when you want and take it out when you want. Um, and think about music as a whole. The more you listen, you'll understand how to see it. See it as an artist. Look at the whole picture. You know, I see the way I play as a mat, I like a mat on the canvas, paint thrown straight on in a certain way. And I have an idea in my head of this picture of how I want to portray. It, it develops naturally inside and these things will go on. But again, you can help um, facilitate how you want to play. Um, the more listening to you, you do, and I've said on a different video, by listening to other instruments. All right. So, so if you're going to experiment with this vibrato, remember, um, be selective with it, um, and it's, it's a process. It gets better over time. Some guys can do it a lot better than others, um, but you're not running their race, you're running your race. Ignore the competition, they don't exist. Deal with yourself. Okay, that's important. And I always say that to all my students, is that, uh, you know, you, uh, you work against yourself. You know, they're of no consequence, just you, okay? Um, so, thumbs up and subscribe if you want to get me for the Skype lessons. Get me through my website, Harper the Healer at Wix. Um, check out my other videos and um, have some fun. Give it a go um, and incorporate it into your playing. Uh, oh, one last thing. It is very useful, particularly if you're about to blow a reed or you can hear it going on a gig. Sometimes you can use the facility just to disguise the fact that uh, the reed's going I've done that before now um, and kind of works for a couple of minutes anyway. All right, hope that's helpful to some people. I'll catch you on the rebound.